Well, hello again, everyone. I appreciate you tuning in to my YouTube channel. And uh, we're going to be starting a brand new painting. And as a matter of fact, this is the painting that we'll be working on. Um, I've obviously completed the painting now. And so we're going to kind of rewind, show you the steps I took to achieve this. What I'm titling is an epic, vast landscape. I've been working on a lot of portrait style paintings uh, for quite a while now, and I've just kind of wanted to get back to doing a nice landscape. Um, and as a matter of fact, an epic and very vast landscape. So what I've done is I've taken a 24 by 36 inch canvas and um, I've created this piece. Um, so excited to show you the steps that I took uh, in order to do this. Um, I please encourage you to, to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hopefully uh, you can find this tutorial very helpful on how I achieved uh, creating this painting. So uh, without further ado, let me uh, get this video started. Again, thanks for tuning in. Okay, so I'm starting here by wetting the canvas and adding some gesso. Get that nice and smooth. Make sure it stays moist. I can bring in my blue now. Get that nice and smoothed out very evenly. And I'm starting now by just adding the distant cloud formations here in the sky. I've let my, my blue underpainting completely dry and now I can come back and, and dry brush these formations uh, very nicely onto the canvas. <clears throat> so just continuing with this light blue gray mixture that I've created, I, I created this using ultramarine marine blue, some burnt umber and some white, and uh, we can get these, these basic cloud patterns kind of blocked in here really quickly. Coming back and just changing the value a little darker now so I can kind of layer on some more formations. And I wanted to get some, some lighter clouds here uh, just using some of my white and, and some orange and yellow. Kind of throw these on real quickly here just having some basic shapes. Now, while the, um, the clouds are still kind of wet here, I'm coming back with some, with my little filbert brush and um, bringing in some of that yellow white mixture and adding some nice shapes into the clouds. Kind of capping these clouds here and uh, this is just helping to kind of create a little bit of, of layering for the clouds. So now I'm starting to bring in the basic mountain range here. Um, these are the different peaks um, using my little angular brush here and, and and kind of trying to lay in exactly where I, how I want these to look. Um, still, this is going to be some of the most distant peaks, so we're using some of those light blue-gray colors uh, to, to lay these in. That'll help to give the indication that these are very distant uh, mountain ranges. Now, as I move forward, I'll slowly change the value a little bit darker, add a little bit more umber and ultramarine blue and uh, that'll help to uh, kind of create some layering and uh, and kind of give the illusion that these are just a little bit closer. And 
then these are going to be even a little bit closer now and so they'll be a little bit darker here i'm just kind of adding a little bit more umbers and blues and and even a little bit of midnight black here to get this most most prominent and close peak so kind of laying this in kind of figuring out where that all goes now these clouds have kind of dried a little bit more and Keep in mind, this is all acrylic that I'm working in right now. I'm completely under, I'm completely laying this all, this underpainting in, in acrylics to begin with. So there won't be an enormous amount of detail, uh, but just enough. And then we'll come back in a little bit and we'll lay in oils on, on top of the acrylic. So kind of created a little gold color here through my orange and yellow and some white and just creating some really simple brush strokes to kind of give the indication that we've got some light, some distant light hitting the sides of, of the peaks on this mountain. And then as we move a little further down here, these are kind of grassy uh, peaks. So um, kind of brought in a little bit more green into my mixture to kind of give that indication. We don't need a whole lot of detail. So I'm kind of bringing in a little bit of uh, some mist here in the background using my little filbert brush and using a little bit of blue and white. You don't need a lot of color on your brush at all. Keep it pretty dry so that it's so that it uh, is really smooth when it comes off. So we'll go ahead and add the other distant peaks here and you want to just jump around definitely use your underpainting to to the greatest of advantage and let a lot of that underpainting come through here you don't want to kill that it's going to be very important to be able to create this illusion so kind of jump around kind of find these different peaks And once again, as we move on through the, this mountain range, get a little closer here, we're just going to add uh, the illusion, just a couple very simple brush strokes. And you want to kind of jump around and don't create solid lines, kind of make them jagged. And uh, and you want to kind of give that, that illusion by using that underpainting that you've got some crevices here and some deep chasms. So now we're going to work on this prominent mountain and um, kind of the same technique. If this is completely dry now, so I can come back and dry brush blend this on. Um, again, don't use an enormous amount of paint on your brush. Um, and you'll be able to keep these very soft and blended well. So it's just the kind of opportunity now we can just kind of kind of pinpoint exactly where we want to have some of the primary peaks and valleys here and uh, and and then we can come back now um, come with a little bit lighter color our obviously our light source is coming from the right in this painting so keeping that in mind and then uh, coming back now with with uh, a light um, sap green and kind of lay in the uh, the valley here all in green. So at this point it's just a matter of kind of bringing in the rest of the acrylic underpainting and this will help me to sort of stage exactly where I want to have everything all the act all the action and activity occurring in the painting. Now I'm coming back and I'm I've added a little bit of purple to my sap green mixture and and uh, now I can kind of figure out exactly where all of my shadows are going to be stretching um, throughout the valley. And I can start now to lay in some some basic 
some basic tree lines and, and some woods, um, kind of figure out where, where I want to do that. Now I'm using, um, I've added a, a lot more blue into my sap green. Um, blue and sap green make great, um, great shadow colors um, when it comes to shrubbery. So um, we that's kind of where I'm laying that in. And, and this is, of course, going to be another mountain range uh, here off to the right. And that'll be casting quite a shadow across the valley. So I started making it dark and I decided to go ahead and turn it green. And there's a method to the madness here, but uh, it's good to find kind of a middle tone color or middle value uh, color to put into um, these different uh, trees and mountain ranges. Um, later I'll come back through and add all my darker colors. It'll make a little bit more sense uh, later, but I'm just trying to right now play with the colors and figure out exactly the colors that I want. And, uh, and so I, I've just kind of changed my mind a little bit here, but it just helped me to figure out uh, mainly getting getting the right the right color here. So again, this is all done in acrylic. Um, as I lay these in, I'm looking for those middle value colors, and um, and then from that I can create my shadows and my highlights. All right, so I've added a little bit, I've kind of fast forwarded here, add a little bit more um, of our mist. And now I can kind of finish off here with some more of this basic acrylic underpainting. So the key here is just going to be to um, kind of map out everything, all the shapes, um, figure out your basic uh, color schemes and get all that done in acrylic so that it can dry quickly. Um, and it's okay if you have brush strokes, you're gonna go through um, everything again with with uh, your oil paints and that's where, that's where all the details really gonna come. Okay, so this is going to be the most um, the most close uh, foreground sort of of hill uh, that that I'm kind of bringing in here now. Okay, so now I can start to kind of lay in some of the rocks and boulders uh, that we're going to have kind of strewn throughout the uh, painting here. So I'm just using kind of a kind of a middle tone gray color that I've mixed with my blue and, and sienna. Now I'm coming back with my tree and texture brush. This is a great brush and I'm just stippling on my some black and uh, color here and what I'm doing is I'm using liquid and using my black and just put a little bit on the brush, and then I can just dot and steeple, uh, stipple on um, some of these effects. And then where I have deeper shadows, um, I can kind of bring those in too with, with that brush. Now I've let a few days, or maybe just, actually it, it dries pretty quickly, so I, I've kind of let a day go by, but um, now that, that that stipple effect is kind of dry, I can come back now and, and using my, uh, my little rigger brush, I can start to lay in some some basic highlights. And you kind of want to clump this, um, try to jump around and, uh, and try to use some spacing. Um, let some of that, it's important to let this underpainting come through that acrylic underpainting with uh, the black um, oil paint that I've used the liquid. Um, let that show through and um, 
again, with, with this particular technique that I'm demonstrating, it's important to, to really use your, your underpainting. And the nice thing about using acrylic, you could, you could definitely do your underpainting in oil. It just takes a lot longer to allow to dry. So laying this all in an acrylic first um, allows it to dry quickly. And then of course, when you lay in your first um, shadowing with the liquid and the blacks uh, to, to create that, that stipple effect, um, that dries pretty quickly too because of the liquid. So you can come back here after <clears throat> several hours or after a day and and it's dry enough that you can go ahead and lay this in. So at this point in time, I've kind of moved my palette to um, to my oil palette. So we're, we're pretty much done with with using the acrylic paint. So now that uh, the sky is dry, I'm coming back with with my oils and um, and just kind of laying in a little bit more color, kind of adding some softness to the sky. Now I'm using my tree and texture brush and I'm kind of stippling in some, some basic grasses in the back and I'll bring in some shadow as well. So I'm stippling in again <clears throat> with my liquid and my black. Uh, kind of adding some texture on the mountainside. And you don't want a lot on your brush, um, otherwise it, it tends to blob a little bit. You won't be happy with the effect. So you just want to kind of measure out your liquid and uh, your oil paint, kind of in equal parts, um, but just not quite as much liquid because it will make it too runny. All right, so we're gonna kind of add now some some basic highlight as if the sun is kind of filtering through the canyon or filtering through into the valley area and, and striking uh, the side of, of this mountain. So I'm using a lot of um, yellows and oranges and, um, and burnt sienna to kind of achieve these colors. And then I'll go back through here and I'll, I'll, tweak, I'll tweak this a little bit and, and I'll even uh, tweak a little bit more later on uh, when the painting is nearly complete. So we'll just come back and revisit that. But uh, coming through and adding some basic highlights and um, kind of trying to figure out where I think that sunlight's gonna be striking. I'm using a very fine brush here. This is a 20 over zero brush. Um, and uh, you can get some really good details with that. I'm using a lot of very small brushes here. Okay, so we're coming through here and uh, adding a little bit more sienna and uh, just trying to make some basic shapes. And it's, again, it's nice to kind of, kind of jump around and, and break up your lines, uh, make them jagged. It kind of helps to make that mountain a little bit more wild and raw. Okay, so, uh, just kind of working on some boulders here. Kind of figuring out where where the light's going to be hitting on that and uh, just using some, some yellow and white here to, to lighten that up a little bit more. The important thing about this technique I'm demonstrating here is that um, for the most part, as you go back into uh, the painting and use those oils, you're going to be using your, your tree and texture brush quite a bit to, to lay in your lights and your shadows. And uh, every time I go back into my, my tree line, um, I'll start by stippling on my, my dark shadow colors and then going back later on with highlighting.
Okay, adding a little bit more foliage here to this, to this mountainside. Kind of going into some of the mist. I uh, wanted some of that kind of that leafing patterns to sort of um, kind of come through that mist a little bit. Okay, so kind of working on some more tree lines here and uh, get these all laid in here, add some, some highlight. These are really distant. You don't need a lot of detail here, but just, uh, just enough to kind of give that indication of, of what that's going to be. So I'm coming back and stippling on more of that dark color. Uh, that'll be all my shadows, and it'll kind of look like leafing patterns. And come back with my rigger brush, and and then kind of create some of the highlights as if a little bit of the sunlight is is hitting the topmost part of of that forest. I'm just kind of creating little triangular shapes as if they're just the top of pine trees. Now I come back with uh, some of my yellow green and kind of get some highlights going here. All right, so we have some tiny little dusty roads um, way in the in the distance here. So these are what. Uh, this is supposed to indicate are just some roads. And we've got some more little tree lines, little stands of trees way in the back. Um, just small, very little simple shapes. Get our little highlights in off to the right of the trees. So come through here with that tree and texture brush and get a little more stippling uh, over this line of trees here and still using that same brush I can lay in some basic highlights. Now we can kind of start to work on these other boulders now and uh, bring in a little bit of that shadowing. Go ahead and stipple on some texture on those boulders as well. And 
then we can just start to add those highlights. And these are just going to be some more trees here that we're bringing in some of the, the leafing. And I like to use this rigger brush for that. It's very fine, very distant, very tiny brush strokes. So I uh, just need a little bit of patience uh, with it, but, but I think you'll like the outcome if you just practice that patience. So a lot of bushes, a lot of little trees here. Bring a little bit more texture, kind of here in that, that dirt area. A little bit of shadowing here on the tree lines and on the boulders. And then we can bring in just some initial highlighting here with that tree and texture brush. So very good brush, very versatile. Um, I got that brush from Rosemary and Company. It's a, a really great um, manufacturer of art supplies in the UK. So I highly recommend using them. You can order them online and they just have a, a great, um, just a great product, so. So just slowly, subtly adding a little bit more highlight here. And uh, we'll come back and revisit this area again as well and, and kind of tweak it as we go. But, but uh, this is just kind of sort of an initial laying in of, of some of these shapes. A little bit of stones here, little little rocks. All right, so I'm using a, a really cool brush here. This brush has got uh, kind of kind of spaced out bristles, so I can make these really great little little lines that can help to kind of look like like a stand of trees or, or some trunks. And you can you can fit in several all at one time kind of create a quick little forest here. Okay, and then we can stipple on all of our all of our dark shadows and our dark leafing patterns. But uh, to try to get uh, some good texturing going here. And then these will become uh, some more some more dense forests. And of course, once again, coming back with the rigor brush and, and bringing in some of those highlights. And that's kind of the pattern um, that will be repeated again and again throughout this painting. But I find that the, this is the way that you can, at least one good method that I've found for myself to create some very effective um, foliage and leafing and, and trees and, and so forth. Now just, again, trying to create some, some little distant pine trees, uh, just creating these little, these little pyramid shapes here. Don't need a lot of them uh, to kind of create this effect, but just kind of lay these in real quickly.
Okay, so we've got a little bit more of that road. It's kind of snaking and meandering around the floor of this valley. I'm just using a, a very pale um, brown to achieve that. And they come through and we'll find little places to put trees. All right, now we're coming back to add some texture here to the foreground here on, on our little hill here and using that tree and texture brush. We'll go through here with that. And again, this is just black and liquid and that's all it is. So we'll get that stippled on here and find out where we have all of our shapes and some of our deeper shadows. I'll go over the rock as well here in a moment. Um, just kind of laying in some basic shadow on the rocks. And then we'll just come back and stipple over that as well. And it kind of creates some of those divots and some texture on those rocks. And coming back and using, using black, um, I can start to create the silhouette now of of some trees and some bushes. Uh, the great thing about this painting is it's just a lot of contrast, uh, which is what I liked about it a lot, um, going from lights to darks. And um, I think that's manifest really well here. Um, and to kind of create that depth, uh, there's, there's six or seven value changes throughout this painting to kind of create that depth. And now we're just going to stipple on a little bit more color for this line of trees. So same basic pattern, repeat it again and again. And come back here and add that highlight here with my little fan brush. I wanted to get this this line of trees in really quickly since they're sort of tucked away further back there in the painting and and then we'll continue with our black and bring in some of those foreground trees that will be kind of in front of that line of trees. Okay, so just adding a little bit more of uh, our of our mist with, uh, with just with my little filbert brush here, just a little bit of paint. And um, I can kind of bring in a little bit more mist that I can scumble on here. So that's kind of all I'm really doing is just adding to the mist a little bit. And now I'm coming back and on top of the mist, I'm just adding with my smaller brush some individual little, uh, little pockets of clouds and, and just little patterns and formations in, inside these clouds and in some of this fog. Just adding a little bit of interest here and, and kind of tweaking some things as I go. And now I can come back over this and add some more of my my dark tree formations here in the in the foreground. It's important to come back with that rigor brush here and go over that initial um, blocking in phase and bring in those uh, those individual little little leaf patterns. I 
And I'm just bringing in some, uh, using some of that light yellow green just to kind of dot around there and, and as if uh, there's holes, you can kind of see through the canopy there a little bit. So I've kind of uh, drawn in my basic tree or trees, I should say here. We've got two uh, prominent trees. Um, I'm using uh, pure black on these and uh, and just laying laying in these trunks. These are kind of old gnarly trees, so they kind of curve. Then laying in my blue green, this again is going to be that that kind of middle tone color that we want to have here. And I'll let that dry, and then I can stipple on some some of that black prior to bringing in all the highlights. I just bring in some some basic individual leafing on on some of these bushes that we can kind of see a little bit. This will be the main tree, of course, and it's the most important feature. I think it's the most important feature in the entire painting. Um, it's certainly the most prominent um, here in the foreground, and, and so um, you want to take great care as you as you create this tree. And for me, I, I think the this tree was one of my favorite features to the entire painting. I'm getting cut off here a little bit, so I apologize. I'll get the uh, camera readjusted here pretty soon. But uh, but trying to just figure out where basically where our canopy is going to kind of kind of live here. And then I'll let I'll let a few days go by and let let that dry so that I can go back into it again and add some detail. So certainly time consuming, um, requires a lot of, of time and patience here. So I'm kind of bringing in now um, some sunspots. Uh, I wanna kind of give that illusion that uh, sunlight is kind of filtering through the canopy. And, and so we're getting a few little features like that that are that are striking uh, the tree here. Adding a little more shadowing now and just some more patterns. Um, some more texture into into this hillside. And now that I've got everything kind of laid in, I can kind of figure out a little bit better now where exactly certain things are going to live. Bring in some more boulders, a lot more rocks, and just have those kind of all over the place. And try to be 
don't don't look for uniformity um, try try to just make different shapes make them irregular and kind of uh, throw them around haphazardly uh, it's kind of how nature would do it so trying to get a little more texture here uh, Now I can kind of come through with uh, some a little bit lighter tones now, lighter greens, and, and sort to of start to create some of that shaping a little bit more now. Just kind of want to jump around, give the illusion that there's a lot of rocks and in the ground, so it's kind of um, it's just kind of bumpy. So now I'm stippling on my, my dark black colors into the trees. Now I, a, a day or two has gone by and those are just a little bit drier so I can kind of get that done. And then while that's drying, we can come back into uh, the foreground region here and start kind of adding a little more detail and highlights. Now working on this boulder, a lot of detail in this boulder. It's obviously a very prominent feature in the painting as well. So it's really just a matter of jumping around from my lights and my darks. Obviously, we used a lot of greens and yellows um, and blues in, in this painting to kind of achieve this. This is a chance now to really show that contrast and even down to the blades of grass, putting uh, light, light blades of grass in front of dark regions and vice versa. So. So definitely a great exercise in that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so now um, can come through here and, and add some basic uh, leafing patterns here. And we're gonna get some highlights. And I'm just using, again, that rigor brush. I'm trying to jump around and just create small individual clumps of leaves let a lot of that underpainting come through, a lot of the, the green and a lot of that black underpainting, uh, and that'll help to create that illusion of depth in, into the canopy and, and all sorts of things going on there. So I guess I'll lay it in here and it, Really, it's just, um, I'm just kind of dotting this on. I, I'm, I'm kind of dotting and I'm also kind of creating small, tiny little, little brush stroke lines uh, in all different um, directions so that we can just kind of get a lot of, of, well, kind of try to make it look as if uh, we've got a lot of uh, leaves that are all kind of splattered through the entire canopy here. And 
we'll come back here and we'll add some more. I'm gonna let that dry for a few days. Um, and then I can come back and I can put a few more, even prominent, more prominent uh, leaves so that, uh, so that that'll even pop out just a little bit more. Now I'm just trying to open up the canopy a little bit and add some light kind of filtering through somewhat. Some of that background come through a little bit more. So I've created a really kind of a blue-gray color here. Not a lot of paint on on my my tree and texture brush uh, to to just gently bring over that that darker region of the hill here and, and try to create a little bit more uh, subtle shapes. And then also with that that blue-gray color, I'm just bringing in some basic colors into that tree line. I, it's still going to be mostly in silhouette, so you don't need a whole lot of that. Now I'm I'm coming back through and I'm just kind of lightening up now some of these hills and some of the valley floor here with some uh, green and yellow. And then um, a few days have gone by. This has kind of dried a little bit more so I can come through and add all my individual blades of grass. So this is, again, another pretty time-consuming process but, uh, to be done with your small rigger brush, um, but well worth it. Uh, this really brings a lot of character to the foreground. All right, so um, coming back to tweak more of my mountain, I, I just wanted to get some veins um, running through the mountain. Uh, a little bit more highlights that I thought we'd, we'd sort of see and add a little bit more character to, to the side of this mountain. This is an important mountain. Definitely has the most detail into it. So I uh, just needed to take the time and kind of tweak this a little bit more, add a little bit more snow. And then taking that same mixture, I'm added. I've added more blue and more umber, and just kind of darkened it up a little more. And then, of course, that'll be the <clears throat> the um, shadowed side to the mountain. So again, very important to jump around, <clears throat> think about your negative space, allow your underpainting to, to come through a lot, really depend a lot on that underpainting here to make this work. Okay, so we can uh, come back now, a few days have gone by and I can add some more leafing, kind of, um, <clears throat> kind of make it a little more dense. Uh, add to my little clumps and um, even add a little bit more lighter values here as if we've got a little more sunlight kind of striking certain parts of, of this tree. Just want to think about where the shadows are going to be on this tree and 
and uh, bring in some of that that leafing even down below the canopy line so that uh, it just it just looks a lot better to have some of those individual leaves kind of showing through. So I'll let my value here add a little bit more yellow to my green mixture and I'm going to be a little careful here. Yellow can certainly kill everything if you use too much. So um, just kind of jump around and be kind of sparing with, with how you're using it. Okay, now I can come back and uh, add some more blades of grass and really kind of seat some of those rocks and some of those lumps in the hillside here. And uh, this painting is nearly complete. We can uh, get ready to sign it. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope that was helpful. It's a really cool technique and uh, give it a try. Um, appreciate you tuning in. Please subscribe. Uh, we'll look forward to doing another one of these videos real soon. Thanks so much.